Okay, Steve, let, let's start the session exactly how you started that last match when you were okay. here. Okay. Well, first thing is get a pellet band on the hook. Flatten the band between your fingers yeah. and hook through two walls. So, and then slide it to the back of the hook. So your pellet sits on the shank of the hook rather than on the bend. Pick up a nice shaped pellet in the band. There you go, straight in. I'm not going to start with a lot of bait. I'm going to feed a small ball of microbes about that big. See what happens. This wind's hideous, isn't it? No, it's really getting a. Yeah, it's a good job we've got a stiff pole. Because in the wind, the stiffer your pole, unless it blows around. I noticed this width. All, with, all, with three, the all three of you in the last three days are all using the same pole. Basically, I think it's because it's probably the stiffest pole on the market at the moment. Very strong and ideal for this type of fishing. And what, what length do you fish that up to? Up to? Well, I, fi I fish this up to 18 and a half, 19 metres. That 19 metres? Yeah. But obviously they changed the rules here now, and it's back to 16 metre limit, which is which is fair enough, you know. It doesn't worry me. So how long would you would you give that before we did something else? <laughs> Today, probably 15, 20 minutes, because I feel that your best chance of winning this section is to catch quite a few fish up the far bank to start with. And, 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 it, and if I was on any other peg in this lake, Dave, I'd be starting on a, on a method feeder up the far bank. Yeah. And when they do that, they tend to fish for about an hour on that. So I've got plenty of time to make me, my mind up. And that, that's the key, isn't it, to this time? I mean, it, it, it's so easy to, you know, for what, you, what, you, what you're explaining here, it's so easy to blow your peg apart early, isn't it? I mean, I remember doing this fishing against, against you when we used to fish down at Hayford and places like that. And it, yeah. And, 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 and a lot of anglers, myself included at the time, fed, just fed too much too soon. Yeah. It, and it was great on the good pegs because you could win the match. But, was, but on yeah. the bad pegs, you just spent sort of four and a half hours sitting there <laughs> doing nothing. But in those days, Dave, we fed casters, didn't we? Rather, yeah. rather than pellets. You know, yeah. Pellets have revolutionised carp fishing, really. Things have changed so much in the last five or six years since the introduction of pellets, especially down here. I notice you keep lifting and dropping the bait. Yeah. Why, why do you do that? Well, basically, I've dropped my little ball of pellets in, and that's that's broken up as it's gone down. Not, it's not the same as dropping in loose pellets. As soon as you do that, the fish are looking to come off the bottom. I'm trying to keep them on the bottom, but they tend to sit over your bait, and by lifting and dropping, you aggravate one into taking it. Is it critical? I mean, is it worth just lifting like an inch or two, or is it, is it always an exaggerated big lift and then drop? I think it's people, people's personal styles. Yeah. You know, I tend to lift and drop it down from quite a height. Yeah. Other people might just lift the float uh, tip out of the water and lower it. Yeah. You know, you, you find what's effective for you, really, when you fish this way. It's just making something sort of stand out yeah. for the fish to snap at, I guess. Yeah. You get one or two indications now, by the looks. Are they just liners, do you think? Yeah, there's fish grubbing around there. I, I haven't really started in what I feel will be the best place in the peg to catch a weight of fish. Right. I, I like to, to start off of where I think will be the best place, try and nick one or two from there, and then move into what I think will be the hot spot. Right. And in this case, you've obviously got two, two, two overhangs of yeah, grass. Yeah, the, the, the two doodles. I think in between those two doodles. You call bushes, them doodles? Yeah, doodle bushes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It looks like it might be a rope. <laughs> yeah, they all can. Yeah. Best if you win it by a couple of ounces. Well, that rope should be important, especially as it's foul up. <laughs> <laughs> as there's roach there, I'll drop another little ball in, try and get some carp interested. As soon as the carp move in, the roach will push out.
important thing when you fish like this, Dave, is to have your rollers at the right height so you don't get a lot of bounce as you push your pole out. That's so quite you... a big roller you use as well, isn't it? Yeah. I, I prefer that one because it's very stable. There seems to be two schools of thoughts on rollers. Some people go for the big V ones and other people prefer Yeah, them. I think it's personal preference. Yeah. Wind's becoming a squat. Come on a little bit from the days when we used to screw one into a bank stick, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Just to break a few poles that way. I don't think that one's a roach, is it? No, this <laughs> could be a carp, Dave. It feels like very good fish, actually. I know just like just before you struck into that one, there's loads of indications. Have you got that pellet set just at dead depth across there now? Yeah, it's, I'm fishing against a little bit of a slope. It changes about an inch in, in three inches. Right. And um, I can drop it so it's just off the slope and just off bottom, or push it a fraction over and fish with it just touching bottom. Yeah. It's like a cracking fish, that That's one. That's a good fish. I hope it's not foul up. Don't think it is. Feels like it's in the mouth. You see why I fish quite tight elastic over there, Dave? Yeah, you can't, but you, you can't rush this bit, can no. you? Once you get into the middle, you just need to take oh, yeah. your time, don't you? Yeah. Again, I see a lot of anglers, because they think they've got to fish for a big weight, trying to, trying to really rush this process, then all of a sudden you realise you've lost six or seven pounds off your yeah. school. The most important thing is that fish goes in the net. Every one you catch means somebody else has to catch another one. This could be eight or nine pound. These hollow elastics are really revolutionised sort of carp fishing as well, aren't they? They're so forgiving as well, aren't they? Yeah, some people, some people are not, fa are not, you know, sort of in favour of hollows. Still fish solids, but mm. personally. I prefer hollows. Well, I, th I think as well. Now you've got now you've got these these pull bung systems. That's a belting fish, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Nice one. Yeah, that's seven or eight pound, I should think. What you find a lot of people do is take the fish out of the landing net, handle it. No need to do that. Just like, get the hook out. Get them in your neck quick, save a load of time handling the fish. I'm just about to say, with, with this pull bung system, if it is a really big fish, you can just you can speed that process up of netting the fish as well. Yeah, the, the advantage of pull bungs, people think they're for bullying fish, they're not. They're so, you know, they were invented so you could fish with light lines, light elastic, and still land big fish. Yeah. They're fantastic for, for catching bags of mixed fish. Yeah. They make a huge difference. As I've had that fish, I'm going to drop another little ball in. Well, that's a bonus fish off a place I didn't think would be the best place in the peg, though. Yeah. What I'll do is, next time, I should drop this ball in on the line I'm fishing, and next time I go out, I should drop a ball in where I think will be the best place, but not fish it. Just prime it up a little bit for when I do want to go there in a, in a moment. It's literally feeding for, feeding for the next fish, You're isn't feeding it? for one fish at a time, yeah. And if you did it any other way, you'd foul hook fish and lose, drive the shoal mad. Yeah. You know, if I tried to lose feed over there today, with this wind, the bait would be going everywhere. Fish would be climbing up the bank, trying yeah. to get at your pellets. You just foul them. <laughs> 